everyone welcome to botany insider and in this lecture we'll be discussing about one of the topic from unit 13 and that is electrophoresis i'll try to explain the basic principle for the electrophoresis and then we'll be discussing some brief introduction about the agarose gel electrophoresis also so talking about that what electrophoresis is all about so it is a separation technique it is very simple rapid and a very sensitive technique and if you look at the term of electrophoresis so it is made up of two terms that is electro and phoresis electro in simple word means the energy of the electricity and the phoresis means carry across so we can say that the movement of the charged particle in a fluid or a gel under the influence of the electric field is what is known as electrophoresis so we can say that it is a technique which uses electricity in order to separate out the various components that we have taken into consideration and this complete process occurs under the influence of the electric field so we can say that electrophoresis is a laboratory technique that is used to separate the dna the rna or the protein molecules that are based on their size and the electrical charges an electric current is used to move the molecules to be separated through a gel the pores in the gel works like a sieve allowing the smaller molecules to move faster rather than the larger molecules so consider in a simple words if we want to define so this is a gel plate that we take for the complete process and we load the component that we want to separate and these components are loaded onto the wells so the area where these components are loaded and these components could either be dna rna or any molecule that we want to take we'll be discussing about that in a bit so consider this is the gel tray that we have taken and this is and this is the area where we have loaded our components which we want to separate that is the sample which we want to separate so we have the electric field supplier present here and we have connected this electric field to the area where we are actually performing the complete function and then after loading the sample that after loading the components that we want to separate pour a liquid in which the complete process would occur what is this all about let's understand about this so a technique for separating the components of a mixture of the charged molecule the proteins dnas and the rnas in electric field with the within a gel or other support so as we have discussed so this is the gel area where we load on our gel that gel could be made of agar or any other component depending upon which is the mixture that we are taking so if we want to separate out the various mixture of the dna rna or the proteins so we will load the complete sample onto the gels by the help of micro pipettes so what are micro pipettes ones so micro pipettes are nothing they are a type of a dropper very small sized which could transfer very minute amount of the sample onto these gels and after the sample has been loaded the electricity is switched on and then under the influence of the electric field these molecules starts to move towards the opposite pole and the gel that is present it contains some pores in it and these pores actually work as a area from which these complete particles that are being separated could be moved across and this complete movement is based upon the electric field as we have discussed and also one more point to remember is that the smaller molecule move faster than the larger molecule that is at the end of the result or after the complete process has been completed we switch off the electric current and then we would be finding out that that is towards the well we would be having the larger fragments present and towards the other pole we would be having the smaller fragments present so why is it so because the pores which are present in this gel in this pouring gel it allows the smaller molecules to move faster and the larger molecules to move slower and as a result of this complete experiment we would have our larger molecules and the smaller molecules being separated out so the movement of the electrically charged molecule in the electric field often results in their separation we have just discussed 
so this is how the complete electrophoresis works so electrophoresis is the motion of the dispersed particle that is relative to the fluid under the influence of a spatially uniform electric field so this is how the complete process occurs so you can see we have the electrodes being present positive negative and the positive one we have the buffer solution being there and we have loaded our sample onto the wells that is this is the area where the complete sample is being loaded and then we have our gel being present so now after the complete electricity is is switched on the molecules get separated out and at the end of the result we have the larger molecules being present towards the well and the smaller molecules being present towards the opposite poles and also we load on the buffer solution also in this complete apparatus so we have the mixture that we have taken and there is various speed by which these molecules would be moving ahead so the speed is actually determined by charge upon mass ratio so what would be the charge and what is the mass of that particular molecule the ratio of those two components would actually determine the speed of that particular molecule and it is also based upon the molecular size shape size and the charge of the molecules talking about the movement so the cation move towards the cathode which is negatively charged and the anion move towards the anode that is positively charged so cation is positively charged so it move towards the cathode that is negatively charged positive and negative charge attract each other and the anion which is negatively charged in nature it move towards the positively charged anode so this is about the movement so now we can separate either the nucleic acid or the proteins so there are two separation depending upon the molecules that we have taken if the nucleic acid is being separated that is either the rna or the dna we use the agarose gel electrophoresis and if we are doing the separation of the protein we would be using the sds page so depending upon which of the criteria is being taken into consideration we have various types of electrophoresis so if the molecular size or shape and the molecular weight is taken into consideration that means we would be performing the agarose gel electrophoresis if we are separating depending upon the charge then isoelectric focusing is taken into consideration and if there occurs the separation or the principle is based upon the charge and the molecular weight it is based upon the 2d electrophoresis so now what are the factors that affect the electrophoresis so there are various factors some of them are the intrinsic and the extrinsic factor talking about the intrinsic factor so the charge of the molecule charge density molecular weight and the shape of the molecule that we are trying to separate out are the intrinsic factors that affect the electrophoresis then we have the extrinsic factors that is the ph viscosity temperature and the electric field strength so these all factors are the extrinsic factors that depend or that affect the electrophoresis talking about the types of electrophoresis so we have the two types of electrophoresis depending upon that whether the support media is required or not required so if the support media is required it is known as zone electrophoresis and if there is no support media required then it is called as moving boundary support media means the agarose support media means for example in the case that we had just discussed in which we use the agar for the complete process so that is the support media and the examples of the zone electrophoresis are the first one is the paper electrophoresis then we have gel electrophoresis third one is the thin layer electrophoresis and also the cellulose acetate talking about the moving ahead talking about the moving boundary in which there is no support media required the common examples are the capillary electrophoresis then we have isoelectric then we have isoelectrophoresis the third one is 2d electrophoresis and the last one is immunoelectrophoresis so let's discuss about the agarose gel electrophoresis in a bit detail i'll be taking only agarose gel electrophoresis in this particular video so the method for the agarose gel electrophoresis include first we have to prepare the agarose gel by, and this is done through the complete laboratory process that is taken into consideration and then after the preparation of agarose gel we pour it into the casting tray with a comb and allow it to solidify 
After that, we add the running buffer, load the samples and the markers and then the gel is run at a constant voltage until the band separation occur and finally we view the DNA on the UV light box and show the results. So let's understand this by the help of this diagram. So now let's try to understand about the agarose gel electrophoresis by the help of this diagram. So what happens is consider this is the tray that we are taking and in this tray the first step that is done is could be pouring the agarose gel sample that we have prepared and in addition to that what we would be doing is that we would be putting out a comb in the starting place itself. Why? In order to make these columns and these columns are called nothing but the wells why these wells are made so these wells are made so that we could load the dna sample that we have to observe so after we have poured the agarose gel what we do is that we make these wells by the, by the help of the comb that we have put there and we left it undisturbed for some time so that the agarose gel could settle down and after the agarose gel is settled down what we do is that we load the dna sample by the help of the pipette that we are using the dna sample is loaded and along with that one marker is also added so that it could be used for the comparison purpose later after that what happens is that we would be pouring the buffer solution also in this particular complete setup when the complete setup is done what happens is we would be connecting these electrodes to the battery setup and finally we would leave this complete setup undisturbed for some time so that the complete process or the complete mechanism could occur when the complete mechanism is done we have our dna sample being separated out what is done is this complete agarose gel is taken out very carefully taking care that no hands are put on here special equipments are used for the same and then this gel is observed under the uv light so under the uv light what happens is these bands are very easily visible and and we could easily observe that which are the bands of which length depending upon the marker that we have applied. So we have the longer band being present towards the well and the shorter bands pre present towards the opposite end. So this was all about the agarose gel electrophoresis. In this video, I'll be dealing with only the agarose gel electrophoresis. I just wanted to make you explain about the basic principle for the electrophoresis in particular so i hope till here the topic is clear to you and with this we're done with the complete topic of electrophoresis and agarose gel electrophoresis in brief i hope this video was helpful for you and if you like this video please do like share it with your friends and please subscribe to my channel i'll be coming up very soon with more informative videos as well and also if you have any doubt in any topic you could let me know in the comment sections below i'll be putting up the video for the same as soon as possible so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon Bye.